Hi out there in World Doll Day land. I'm Kathy Turner and I'm coming to you today in a new land. I'm in the Rip Van Winkle Park in California, courtesy of the Grovian Doll Museum and the Carmel Doll Shop. And I'm here today in the woods to talk about woods and wooden dolls especially. I think most of you are probably familiar with the English uh, wooden dolls, the early English Georgian period wooden dolls, and also the Grodner tall dolls, and they are fabulous. But there's a lot of other types of wooden dolls out there. And I'd like to bring some of those to your attention today. The first doll I'd like to show you today dates from about 1860s, and that is this doll right here. Now this doll was made in Scotland. It was made by a gentleman's company. His name was James William Japp, spelled J-A-P-P. -P. This Scottish gentleman and his family had a cabinet, cabinetry making, uh, timber uh, dealing business, and they were upholsterers in the town of Montrose, Scotland. Apparently he imported timber from the United States turned it into furniture and turned around and exported it back to the States. That was part of his business. But in uh, times of off season, he made also dolls. And these are not common at all. I've, only, I've seen two others like them. Um, I like the way the anatomy has kind of devolved to kind of an old man butt in the back here. <laughs> He has, he or she, has the beginnings of heels on the feet, which makes me think it's toward of, towards the 1870s, perhaps, even. Uh, this doll has been loved to the point where you can start to see the wood showing through, and I think it might be oak. Originally, it was all painted. Typically, the limbs are held on with leather, you know, sleeves attaching the limbs. And the body type is similar to the toffling type that you started to see appearing in Europe. Um, and that was influenced by the Japanese Ichimatsu dolls that came out, uh, that Europeans were exposed to about 18, after Admiral Perry opened up Japan to world trade in after 1854. So the earliest these dolls would probably date from is 1860s into 1870s, I would think. So a very interesting doll, very interesting company and family. Um, these were not just simple farmers or anything. He was actually, uh, James William Jap was actually the provost of Montrose, which means, which is like the mayor, basically. So he was kind of an important guy. And this was one of the dolls they made. And I love the patina. Makes me want to rub it. The next group of wooden dolls that I'd like to introduce you to are from the United States. In the state of Kentucky, there were families of dolls in the Appalachian Mountains that made dolls. One of the women was Orlenia Ritchie, uh, and there she had a sister who made them. Now this particular doll was probably not made by her, but it is amongst the type of dolls that they were making then, though it is fully jointed and more complex than most of it. And these were called the Kentucky Poppets. This is a highly unusual Kentucky Poppet because it's fully jointed. Most of them had cloth bodies and their limbs were attached with the, the wooden limbs were attached by cloth. There's no signature, nothing. She probably dates from about the 1930s. And you look at that fabric on that dress, it looks like the Depression era to me. I don't know that she ever had hair attached, but you know, they did texture it and painted it to have, uh, you know, some color, but that's it. But usually the faces are very much like that. So she is a, a very uh, elaborate Kentucky poppet. I'm gonna lay her down because she doesn't want to sit again. And then we have another form of Kentucky poppet, but this one has another function because this one is also a limberjack. A limberjack is a dancing doll. This one has a hole in the back which a, a dowel would be inserted 
and then you would have a board and you'd sit on the board and you would tap the board and the doll would 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 dance on the board as you tapped as you tapped it. and this one of course is dressed as a Scottish dancer there were a lot of people of Scottish an ancestry in the highlands of Appalachia uh, this one's also unusual and then it has these little glass eyes now when I was reading about the Kentucky poppets uh, one of the things that they said is they used a lot of natural pigments. They used whatever they had on hand to make these dolls. They used things like pokeberry juice to give them rosy cheeks. If they had hair, then they often used um, the hair of small animals like mice and moles and squirrels and wool if they had it. So they were really much a, a creature of whatever they had on hand. And they sold these to raise their bread and nut butter money for their families. And I have one more form of uh, limberjack. This is American made. I don't know who made it. It's not from Kentucky. I would say that this gentleman may be from out west. You see what he has? He has a special feature there. I've never seen one with this before. And instead of having a hole in his back, this one would have hung like this from the top and, and danced. He also has a beard. Uh, this form of doll toy goes back you know, hundreds of years, actually. Uh, they had them in Italy, they had them in France, they had them in England, and then they, of course, made them in the United States as well. Um, and I don't know what kind of wood this doll or this one is made from. Um, it's, I'm uncertain, but they did in Kentucky use buckeye sometimes, apparently, and I think this one here may be made from buckeye. And what I forgot to tell you about the Limberjack dolls is I, when I was researching these, I found out that in England in the 1971, I think it was, there was a gentleman named Harry Cox, who was a famous English folk singer who, sold, who sang old English ballads. He was commemorated by a Limber jack convention of all things in england uh in the 2000s 2003 or something like that uh, so you know they had a whole convention revolving around limberjack dolls at that time moving on to wooden dolls into the 20th century and again in the united states I wanted to bring you this lady. I believe that she's carved out of balsa wood because of how light and fragile this wood is. There was a woman named uh, Margaret Taylor Dry who was making dolls in the 1940s. This one I believe is dated 1941. And uh, she was a professional ballet dancer. And she created these wonderfully carved wooden dolls to represent different ballets and I have found two of her creations most of them appear to be owned by uh, museum collections actually so they're not often found on the market but if you ever see something like this they are simply exquisite her uh, tulle skirt is sadly starting to fritter away she is signed on the bottom her name is Sally it says Margaret Taylor Dry, 1941, and she's number 23. So you know there's more of them out there. And we're going to move on to another doll maker, uh, Frances Bringlow. She was uh, a lady who was very interested in history, and she originally started making dolls on wire armatures and cloth. She wanted to use dolls as educational tools for her children. And then she started making them in wood. Um, and most of her dolls were made for the public school system in the state of Washington. She made sets of the dolls. This particular one was not one of those educational sets. It was um, made in 1977, 76, excuse me. Here it says her name, Frances Bringlow, and she has it stamped. And this one was originally um, owned by Susan Circus. The first time I ever knew about these dolls, I saw this in her doll case. 
and I'm uh, grateful to have the opportunity to own something that was once hers. So I, this is special to me because it was owned by her and because it is the most exquisitely jointed wooden doll in this scale. She made her dolls to this scale based upon the size of the cases in various museums that the dolls were made for. Now this group over here, this is Sacagawea, uh, this is Lewis Clark, and this is a little pioneer girl. The pioneer girl is one of a set, a family set, and we have both Lewis and Clark, but I only brought Clark. Those are part of a school set. And it's funny, I'm going to grab one of them and show you what this says on here. It says, please do not remove figure from pedestal. Thank you. <laughs> because these were meant for a school and they had a special wooden case and they passed them around. She has, oh, I almost dumped one into the woods. Uh, she has her papoose on the back. I don't know that Sacagawea had a child, but in this she does show her as having one. Um, she researched these figures that were to go around to the various schools. And this is the original research paper that goes into the case with those dolls. I have the original wooden case for that school set. They were being discarded by the school. And I, a local picker got them from the discard pile from the school and I was able to get them from, from that person in the wooden case, which I couldn't bring. And of course the Pioneer Girl is a simpler form and she has her own doll. But she made the costumes and everything. And you gotta look, even the shoes. Look at the detail on these. The socks, the underwear, everything. Her detail is amazing. So Frances Bringlow is a really a fine American doll maker that I would advise you to keep an eye out for. Let's see if she'll stand there. Yes. The next doll I'd like to expose you to is this gentleman. He is also a wooden doll and he hails from the Philippines. His maker was a lady named Tita Ling and I don't know a great deal about her. Uh, she appears to have been making these dolls in about the 1950s. They were marketed uh, at least in the United States. And one interesting feature is she even inserted eyelashes. He has glass eyes with eyelashes. His clothing is original. This shirt is made out of what they call pineapple cloth. He's jointed just at the shoulders. Now he's missing two fingers, but even so, you can see how exquisite the hands are. The detail work that she was able to get in wood is phenomenal. I think that there was a lot of influence from the making of religious figures in her work. She also made religious figures. He has a lady companion who is uh, his lady friend, but I just brought him to share with you. So if you are looking for unusual, finely crafted wooden dolls, this is something to keep your eye out for. And as for what kind of wood he's made from, I'm uncertain, but I understand that they did a lot of things with Philippine mahogany. So it's possible that that's the wood that this was made from. So I want to thank you for joining me on this tour through the woods of all kinds. And one last tip to leave with you. When you see something you like and you say, oh, I can't afford that, you know, look around because maybe there is something else out there that you can afford that's gliding under the radar of all the people that are buying the expensive ones. These are all unusual, hard to find, but much more economical than some of the more popular wooden dolls. So keep your eyes peeled. Good luck. Happy hunting. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.